Good evening, welcome to the Pearl Report. I'm Diana Lin. Need a car or a suitcase to rent for a day? Tap on an app. Many such online marketplaces have started up to rent or barter goods and services under a so-called shared economy. It's still too early to tell whether such local businesses will click, but as producer Renata Reyes reports, it's not all about making money. I drive the car to work. From Yunlong to Taipo, I think around 20 kilometers. Winifred is an IT professional. And when I was young, I always fancied to have a car. I like driving. This is my first car. A Mini Cooper she bought four years ago. And it's available for $590 a day, including a $160 insurance surcharge and an $8,000 refundable deposit. Via this digital marketplace for car owners and renters, she joined in April last year. That's my car. She rents her car out two days a month on weekends and makes around $1,200. Because I earn some money back from this rental, uh, it's all right for me to see the car depreciated a little bit more. Usually I can uh, get the uh, re uh, response within uh, one to two hours. An IT professional, Shamwai Yin, has you rented know? cars 10 times since becoming a member of the car sharing app this January. Around uh, 500 to 1,000 between these prices are acceptable for me. As I'm living in the shadow, so, uh, sometimes I used to pick my dog to see the doctor in Satin. If I take the test from shadow uh, to Satin, include the tunnel fee, I, the round trip is around 500. He would rather rent a car for an entire day. The whole rental process can be uh, complete in a single portal. I can use the portal to pay the car. Any accident is covered by the company's own insurance policy. It's a wonderful experience for me to rent a car in Kashmir. The rental price is uh, relatively uh, low and reasonable for me compared with another traditional rental company. And now the car is yours. Within a year and a half, the app has amassed 20,000 car renters and 1,300 owners. Each car is used on average by 10 to 12 renters. Cashier can reduce the number of cars running on the road. It actually help to reduce carbon dioxide emission. Hong Kong is very compact. We certainly don't need to buy a car each. Carshare is one of the newest businesses in Hong Kong to be spawned by the biggest trend in tech today. The sharing economy, where ordinary people rent from or barter with each other. When you have something that you want to buy or to use, uh, the platform will help you find a supplier for the resource that you need for that amount of time at the right price, in the shortest time. Joyce Khan, 23, is one of CarShare's founders. We have cars located everywhere within Hong Kong. For example, we are the startup takes a 30% so commission from every rental yeah, transaction. It's funded with a $4 million capital by an angel investor. It has yet to make money. Six more months, we can uh, break even. Uh, we hit 1,000 rentals a month. The key is uh, to have more rentals. The trouble is few people are aware of the service. Most of my friends or my my college uh, didn't know uh, this kind of service that's provided in Hong Kong. We spent very little money on marketing, uh, mostly online, like um, Facebook marketing. A bigger problem for Winifred is the notification system. The tiny icon on the app on her mobile phone turns green once a renter reserves a car. It's easy to miss. Sometimes it just didn't show. The notification should be more Easy to be noticed. She missed alerts twice and lost two potential customers. 
Joy says the app is now being tweaked to show on a map which cars are available in real time and where to pick them up. Right now, it's very manual because you have to do it、uh, through the app and ask if the owner is available. And yeah, in the future, everything will be automatic. Jonathan Shear heads the Hong Kong Internet Registration Corporation that did a survey this June on enterprises in a sharing economy. They are seeing a startup phase.、Uh, not many of them are really、uh, making real money right now. As long as they can find the right target customer, the right service level at the right price, then there is a, a good chance that they can be sustainable. In the last 12 months, 30% of local internet users paid for services to rent rooms, homes, office space, vans, or to borrow money. According to a research by PricewaterhouseCoopers.、Uh, Ten years from now, 2025, the total business volume of sharing economy will be like a 330 billion US dollar. Sharing economy、um, is here.、Uh, it is here in a big way because of technology. Ada Wong founded the Good Lab in Mong Kok three years ago. The co-working space for startups has 20,000 square feet, 200 renters. Hundreds of desks. One desk for three people is rented out for thirty-six hundred dollars a month. People who cannot afford rent、uh, could、uh, come here and be a member.、So、when we opened in 2012, there were only two other co-working spaces: the Cocoon and the Hive in Wan Chai. Today, I was told that there are over 40 co-working spaces. She says demand for sharing economy facilities is driven not just by entrepreneurs but social innovators. Rather than really like welfare and service providers,、uh, social innovators、uh, would come up with a business solution to tackle a social issue.、But、the Good Lab is a social innovation hub for Hong Kong because most of the renters here are non-profit. Now、we've got a, a social venture here, connecting vacant apartments with those、uh, with housing needs. Lin is a jobless single mum with a six-year-old son. Originally from the mainland, she left her violent Hong Kong husband and stayed in a sanctuary for battered women. The two survive on an eight-thousand-dollar monthly welfare allowance. I couldn't move out. I looked for flats to rent, but they were very expensive. I searched for a while. I was so lost and didn't know what to do. Very often, they will be forced to live in subdivided unit. We we knew. The two young girls live just next to prostitute. We also knew some single mothers who live in subdivided unit with a small window, but facing the ventilation hook of a Chinese restaurant and then suffer from nasal allergy. Three years ago, Ricky Yu quit his job as general manager of a direct selling company. He founded Light B, a non-profit that finds decent housing for poor single parent families. To me, it's almost like a midlife crisis, or you can call it a midlife opportunity to do something more than making money. I get a much higher level of satisfaction. Government data show Hong Kong has 2.4 million households and 2.6 million residential flats, an excess of 200,000 units. It's a typical sharing economy activity. We try to share excessive real estate resources with the less privileged. By creating a practical mechanism, so that the landlord can do so. Lin and Sun were referred by government social workers to Light B. They now live in this 500 square foot flat on Hong Kong Island, thanks to the owner Peter Yuan, a property agent. Peter volunteered his flat after learning about Light B through Ricky's friend. I thought this idea is quite silly. A silly idea needs silly people to support. So I'm one of the silly people. I feel good having the ability to help people. It's a blessing.
Lin and Sun rent this bedroom. This one is rented by another single mom with a teenage daughter. On welfare, they pay rent based on what they can afford. The current housing allowance for a um, two to three person family is around 3,000 something. That's the benchmark level. The two families share the rest of the flat. Peter used to rent the flat for $15,000. Now he gets back only 20% of its market value. We should also look at the uh, social impact. I hope it can create much value to the community. Lin must vacate the flat after three years. She's applied for and hopes to get a public housing rental flat by then. We just give them a time space to rebuild themselves so that they can move on. That's why we set a time limit. We don't want to create dependence. Up next, after the break, trading time and talent. Our goal in the future is really to uh, transform the way people work and live. Uh, I like uh, flexible working time, when to work and uh, what place I want to work. And you free in a day, we can find some people. The downside, no way to guarantee quality of work. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Pearl Report. Talent is another resource traded under a shared economy. Online labor markets are especially popular with young freelance workers. Will this so-called gig economy change how we work and find a job and disrupt job ads and headhunting businesses? I'm Nelson Sue uh, from the Wine Lux magazine. And uh, today we organized this beach party in Discovery Bay. We have 40 to 50 booths uh, here uh, on the beach selling the wines, uh, champagne, beer, uh, cocktail. The three day event took 20 temporary workers to put together. For example, like help us for promotion. Some people take care of the counters and some people take care of the ice. Nelson does two of these events a month. In the past, he found temporary workers through help wanted ads. We have to post uh, maybe on the newspaper or sometimes we just ask some of the friends. We must spend a few thousand to find 20 people, maybe two weeks. Yeah, it's difficult. Nelson has found an easier way to look for workers. Through this app, where employers can post jobs for freelance workers. Almost like in a day, we, we can find some people. It is easier for, for us to find a job in Jabda. Maggie, aged 22, is one of the 20 freelancers Nelson hired. She got the job two days after applying. Yeah, I just sell them tickets and introduce to, uh, our packages. Maggie graduated from Open University last August with a degree in banking and finance. She wants to do freelance work before she starts a full-time job as a bank clerk. Because I have no money, I have to do something to earn money. I like traveling, so um, I like to earn more for my next trip. Her job pays nearly $1,500 for three days at $55 an hour for nine hours. I like uh, flexible working time. Um, I want to choose uh, when to work and uh, what place I want to work and the job nature. And you free. I, Seventy percent of our demographics is from eighteen to thirty-four. They are students, so looking for jobs while you know at night or weekends. And then the other uh, part of the twenty-five to thirty-four, they are generally uh, full-time workers who want to have supplementary jobs. Maggie says the app has one major flaw. On the downside, it's the variety of the job. Mostly promoter, waiter, waitress, etc. And not many kind of jobs. While we're starting, we have chosen a few industries. Sania helped found this job app last year. For now, she says the target is the hospitality sector that hires the most freelancers for frontline work, like passing out flyers or waiting on tables. I actually have a wine business. I'm not actively running it anymore. 
But when I was doing wine events, I realized the whole hospitality industry employs uh, a lot of temp workers, 60, 70%. And there's not really a centralized platform for them to find each other. The company is funded by grants from incubation programs for startups. 5,000 workers have signed up at a minimum wage of $50 an hour. Uh, it is negotiable. It's not set by the platform. It's set by the employer. But we will curate the jobs. So jobs that pay less than $50 an hour, we will not generally accept. 200 employers have used the app, which charges a service fee of 10% of each labor contract. We are still trying to build our reputation and uh, earn market share, so we're not yet at the break-even point. We have a target, six months. A target that hinges on a simple business strategy. To source people faster. The startup has a rating system. Candidates topping the list of job applicants are those rated well by employers. Based on their attendance, and employability. We help the uh, employer to pre-select users earlier instead of them digging through every single profile. The record speed for us to uh, go from job posting to arrival at the venue was under an hour and a half. So the employer posted something at 4.30 and the job door was able to arrive in the right gear by six o'clock. I could find uh, someone who's interested within um, Five minutes. There's no way to guarantee quality of work. Joel Labelle is a tech entrepreneur who uses this online job outsourcing marketplace based in Australia. I can just start a project. Joel posts projects for computer programmers to bid for. His project is a Facebook-like portal for athletes. I'll actually post this live and within seconds you will see results coming in. Here's ePlanet Soft India. He can do it in $250 in 15 days. Uh, we have one from the United Kingdom. 90% of it is coming from India. And I've already received 54 bids. And the average bid was 800 US dollars. I currently employ around eight people from uh, third world countries such as India and uh, Hanoi, uh, Vietnam, uh, Philippines. Can you um, attach a picture for us? Now if you click on the post. I can get a programmer the, 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 for uh, 500 right. US dollars. So if I want to say I'm going to Full time. Off, a or, month. Okay. So working six a days a week. Yeah. Joel well, says well, a programmer from Hong Kong earns an average 3,000 US dollars a month. The uh, upside is obviously you get a, a wealth of uh, resources available at your fingertips. The downside is you don't know really the quality that they really can bring back to you. The, the only way that uh, I've been able to guarantee quality is working with them directly. Okay, let me see quality of work within two weeks, two months, etc. And if it's good or bad, then we can have a review and determine if we want to continue with this individual or basically fire. But can job matching portals survive, or will they succumb to competition from help wanted ads? We monitor them, we, we know them, they exist. Diane Chan heads Career Times, a classified ads business started in printed form in 1999, then became a website in 2011, and added an app two years ago. It signed up 600,000 members, both employers and workers and gets 50,000 daily visitors to its website. Adspace here sells for $500 to $1,000. Diane says the key to success for job portals boils down to what makes people go to recruitment sites. It's volume in terms of jobs. If you look at uh, our current database, we have around 20,000 jobs on the website. If you look at that kind of volume, of course, you know, we, we are making money. You have to have a very strong sales team. You have to drive the traffic. Uh, we look at competitions. We look into their business model. If there are you know, uh, good things that we can learn from them, then we change our, our strategy. But, but at this point of time, I think they are still relatively small. This is a Remoa classic flight model suitcase. Rin. 
Rachel Cheung, the proprietor behind a niche business under the sharing economy. Rent a suitcase. It all started from a family trip of mine, where I have to use extra suitcases, and uh, I don't want to buy more suitcases because it's too travel to store suitcases at home. They cost quite a bit, and uh, they don't really get used that often. Why not rent out suitcases to people? Last year, she opened the shop, renting out suitcases for forty-five to eighty-eight dollars a day, plus a four thousand dollar deposit. We have to rent out the suitcase or like other equipments for at least forty percent of the time in order to for us to break break even. She rents out、uh, GoPro cameras as well for fifty-five dollars a day, plus a three thousand dollar deposit. This is how I hold it like this. Catherine Yong, a tea house operator, is a new、yeah. customer. Or,、uh, I'm using it for scuba diving. I don't think I have to need to buy one because,、uh, well, I know GoPro is for you know, underwater photography or extreme sports,、mm -hmm. uh, which I only do maybe once or twice a year. So, how does this work? Now Rachel plans to turn her business into an online platform for people to rent from each other any travel-related items, from drones and bike bags to winter jackets. Peer-to-peer -peer travel equipment rental system, so that people make money from renting it out. Sharing economy is not just about making money. It is a way of life. It is a way of utilizing our resources. Well, thank you for watching our show. It will be re-aired on Monday and Saturday, as well as on TVB.com. Until next time, from the Pearl Report team. Good night, good luck, and good health.